we are still on our series becoming more competent in what say it louder tell your neighbor there is a spiritual warfare ongoing it's not a physical warfare it's a spiritual warfare so let that settle in your heart there is a spiritual warfare every human being is involved whether they know it or not every human being is involved the only human being that is not involved is the one that is not yet born on the one that is dead those are the only two human beings that are not involved in this spiritual warfare if you are a newborn baby from day one in fact from the time of conception some people started fighting amen but if you're a human being and you're alive you are involved in that spiritual warfare and you have certain responsibilities and commitments you must make to yourself you must accept the fact that you are in a spiritual warfare that spiritual warfare came into existence before you and i were born well, you can't make a choice that i don't want to fight there's nothing like i didn't sign for this warfare so you can't make me fight you can't withdraw the only way you withdraw is that you join the devil or devil wipe you out if you join the devil you have lost if he wipes you out you have lost amen so there's nothing like um i i don't i, I, I didn't i don't believe in that have you met some people that say i don't believe in god if you see anybody that say i don't believe in god those are the trophies of the devil they are still alive and devil has won and he's using them as a trophy the bible says the fool says in his heart there's no god so you must not um join them that you, that you doubt that god exists or heaven exists or hell exists does not change the fact that you are involved in a spiritual warfare it only makes you unable and incompetent to engage in that warfare is that okay if you go to ukraine now there if you are living in ukraine you can't deny that you are in war, that war they are fighting bombs are blowing and things happen say i don't believe i don't believe i'm at war they are already at war if a bomb land on your house now you can you if you are arguing that you are not that war you are still at war amen but this particular one is not physical and that's why some people assume that they are not at war but when you see the results of that warfare in nations in families in individuals different manifestation of war whenever there is warfare anywhere in the physical especially you will see different expressions of that warfare for example the warfare in ukraine and between ukraine and russia is affecting us in africa it's affecting the economy of africa because as things are affecting the economy they are spreading all over the world the physical manifestation of the warfare we don't feel it but we feel the economic manifestation do you understand that and the same thing the war in israel and um, in gaza is spreading to different places so war affects many people whether you deny it or not it is real so the the one that we are dealing with now the spiritual warfare has manifestations that you must understand and you must in the course of this teaching we want you to see how to know that somebody is under that wolf under the under the attack everybody the war is on but um, that there's a particular focus of attack on somebody you can take note of that and then okay this is an attack of devil i don't want to be a victim you make that decision two things that can happen you are either going to be a victim or a victor those are two positions whether you fight or you don't fight you are going, you're going to be a victim or a victim if you don't fight you are going to be a victim if you fight you have the chance to be a victor and that is why we are talking and teaching this so that you can know how to fight to win is that okay so as to fight to win not to lose on the sides of the losers in a warfare and the sides of the winner in a warfare there are both victors and losers victors and victims if a war was declared and after they fought and fought and fought and fought and let the war last for 10 years and then one side eventually won on the side of the country or the nation that won there will be people that died they died fighting for their country they may give them award for heroism and all that celebrate them but there'll be a son in that family that lost his father there'll be a woman that lost her husband she became a widow the son become fatherless 
but their country won. Now, they have given a word, but the award does not replace the father that has died. The award does not replace the husband that died. Do you understand that? So when war happens, it affects people differently. And the only opportunity and the thing that God has given to us to be able to do as born again people is that you have the chance to make a decision that I will not be a victim. I've established the fact that in this war that um, the devil Lucifer declared against the kingdom of God and God, he lost before he started. Right now, don't forget that the devil lost before he started the war. So anybody that is on the side of God, in whatever form, in whatever capacity, if you're on the side of God, in the Old Testament, the nation of Israel was on the side of God. In the New Testament, the church is the one that is on the side of God. If you're on the side of God, you will have ultimate victory. So look at three dimensions of victory that is possible in this spiritual warfare. Ultimate victory, corporate victory, and then personal victory. All right? Now, there is another one that I'll call generational victory. These dimensions of victory. Ultimate victory is, the, is what we mean by the kingdom of God has won. If you go to the book of Revelations, the last, the last chapter of the book of Revelations, you don't see the name of the devil there. You don't see anything like that. The kingdom of God has won. Are you listening to me? God won the battle before the devil started it at all. But there will still be the different dimensions of the battle and victory. So that's ultimate victory. So if you're on the side of God, you will have ultimate victory. Is that okay? Corporate victory is the one that as a family of God or people of God, okay, you will have, there is corporate victory. The body of Christ will win ultimately and corporately. As a church, a church is a part of the body of Christ. The church can have corporate victory. Israel in their time, there are times that they had corporate victory and there are people that died. Are you following what I'm saying? Personal, they lost, but the corporate victory is there. And then personal victory is your own responsibility. Did you get that? Personal victory so when we are doing this teaching we want you to focus on the different dimensions if you are born again you will have ultimate victory it doesn't matter if you lost don't, just don't get don't backslide is that okay if you die as a christian you will have ultimate victory one day when jesus comes back i hope you are following what i'm saying praise god how many of you want to be there to raise your children up let me see your hand up Raise up your hand. Raise up. You want to be there to raise your children. Wave your hand. Wave it up. Wave. Keep, keep those hands up. Let me see your hand up. All right. Okay. How many of you here that your father died before you grew up? Let me see your hand. Put your hand down. Uh huh. Let me see your hand up. Your father was not there to raise you up. Your father died when you were young. Let me see your hand up. Anybody like that? Raise up your hand. Okay, your father is still alive. Let me see your hand up. Okay, good. And that's a, that's a wonderful thing for you here. All right? Your mother died when you were young. Let me see your hand up. Uh-huh. Raise up, raise your hand. When you were a kid, you are growing up, and then your father died, or your mother died. So they were not there. Are you following what I'm saying? But you want to be there for your children. Let me see your hand up. Now, it's your responsibility to be there for them. Did you get that? Uh -huh. That's personal victory. Is that okay? Not everybody can say, my father was there to raise me up. My mother was there to raise me up. Did you get what I'm saying? Praise God. In what condition were they when they were alive? That will affect your personal journey. Did you get that? Huh? Amen. You know, on Sunday, I was, I was saying something to them at Ibadan, that um, marriage does not start on the wedding day. Most people assume that 
marriage starts on the wedding day. So they are preparing for the wedding service. Marriage starts when you are born. Your children are already becoming what they are going to become in their marriage now. What you are in your marriage started when you were born. Is that okay? If you are having a good marriage or a bad marriage, it's personal. Does not mean everybody is having that problem. Did you get that? So you must understand the dimensions of victory that we are talking about. Ultimate, corporate, personal. You understand? Now, personal will now become generational. Knowing how to transfer it to your children after you. Is that okay? Wave your hand if you understand what I'm saying. Okay. How many of you know where Ephesus is? Ephesus. Anybody knows where Ephesus is? Geographically today. Huh? Quickly Google it. <laughs> huh? Quickly, I wait for you to find it. Now, people are already answering. I know, I know where it is, but I want you to find it yourself. Anybody has found it? Where is it? It's in Turkey. Is Turkey a Christian country, a Muslim country? Huh? Uh, hold on. Is it a normal Muslim country? Huh? Is a very hardline Islamic country. Do you agree with that? Wave your hand. So Ephesus is where? In Turkey. So you can say that um, the, the church at Ephesus did not become a generational church. Is that correct? Huh? Are you following what I'm saying? Good. How did that happen? That's the spiritual affair that we're dealing with. Is that okay? Huh? Hello? Wave your hand if you're still here. So, you know, when, for example, when I'm talking to pastors and I'm ministering and all that, I'm not just looking at all of you that you are here. I'm looking at those of you that we can put the same spirit and truth inside you. Is that okay? And how well that work will continue. Do you understand that? Praise God. So because most times when people come to church, they're just interested in the crowd. Crowd is for now. But then family is for continuity. Do you understand that? And as a church, we must understand that and begin to check and think. Because that spiritual warfare cuts across every area of life. So if you are thinking of um, personal victory, you must also think of generational victory. Is that okay? Are you still here? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's look at... Um, First Timothy chapter 1. Let me find a passage where I want to explain this one now. I, I hope I'll be able to finish all that I have to deal with today. God will help me. Uh, Second Timothy, look at Second Timothy chapter one. And um, chapter one verse five. Are you there? Huh? When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, we dwell first in what? In thy grandmother Lois and in thy mother Eunice. And I'm persuaded that in thee also. Did you get that? So look at um, what Paul is doing here. Lois, Eunice, Timothy. Okay? Timothy is the third generation. So let's look at... Um, 
Is there anybody here that your father is alive? Huh? Okay. Uh, 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 which one are, who am I going to use for this example? Pastor Lajolo, you come. Your father is late. So, let's start with you. But I think your father was, it was, was your father a reverend father, a, a priest? Your father was not a, a priest. Okay, so, let's start with you now. Let's say you are Lois. All right? Your son, what's his name? Fim. That would be Eunice. Now, you don't know your grandson yet. Okay? Praise God. And um, Elder is here. His son is here. Huh? Oh, yeah, come. Let's look at what I'm dealing with here. So you stand here. No, you stand here. You, elder, elder, stand here. Stand in front. Good. Now, um, can somebody come and represent his son? Bukumi, come and represent his son here. Okay. You are, you, are, you, are, you are a graduate now. You are in final year. Good. You speak in tongues. And um, good. Mm. Now, watch this now. Your son is in secondary school, right? Now, I want you to think about what I'm dealing with now. Is that okay? He's going to graduate very soon. And then maybe in a few years' time, he'll get married. And so we'll be talking of a son, a grandson. Are you following that? Good. Uh, 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 uh. Now, if you now compare, Pastor Louis, there you come. Okay? And um, a brother from the choir, Ron. All right. Now you come and stand here. Move forward a little bit. Move to the left, second line. Okay, you stand here. Femi, you come and stand in front. Now I want you to see something here. Because if you look at Timothy's line, it was the grandmother that faith came in through first. And came into the mother. And by the time it was coming to Timothy, Timothy was an apostle. A bishop of the church at Ephesus. So you can see that the swing of the growth is going upward like that. I hope you are following what I'm saying. Praise God. Now, the goal for pastor here, elder here, is that this swing will go up. Did you get what I just said there? Huh? For example, if you're a woman here, you have a daughter. And then you are the Lois. And your daughter is the Eunice. And what are you doing to make your daughter stronger than you spiritually? And make sure that the daughter that your daughter gives her son will be stronger than all of you. Can you get the picture? Huh? Now you can understand, you see what the devil is doing now. Because I'm talking of the generational dimension, generational dimension of warfare, is that he's fighting to make this curve here to go down like that. Did you see that? Whereas this curve here was going up like that. And as that has been the devil's attack against the church generationally. I hope I'm communicating with you. So I am not, as a pastor now, I'm not interested in how many of you come. I'm interested in how many of you are going to receive the same anointing that I'm carrying and take it stronger. Is that okay? That people will, or people will come, people will always come and, you know, gather around, flock around and things like that. But the people that are going to take it and make it stronger, are the ones that we are really interested in. Are you following what I'm saying? Amen. When I was 
ministering to them at the Abuja Apostolic Service and the, before the public service, I told their members, I said, now nah, what we are looking for, we are just looking for 318 people here. And some of them were shocked. I said, 318, those are the servants of Abraham that were born in his house, that he taught and trained and armed. And these 318 people defeated five armies. I said, so I'm looking for those 318. It doesn't matter how many people gather on Sunday, how many people gather, whatever. But once we have the 318, we can now construct an army of the kingdom around them. Did you get what I said? Remember when 32,000 people came out when God told Gideon to go and fight? What did he say? He said, the people are too many for me. Let everybody that is afraid, let them go. And 22,000 left. In the course of this teaching, you will see where fear is the most dangerous um, spirit that can come at you when you are dealing with spiritual warfare. And why faith is the most potent spiritual force that you must allow. Out of 32,000, 22,000 have fear inside them. So if they had gone to war, they would have wiped them out completely. Is that okay? Actually, the devil needs to make you afraid to begin to defeat you. So, now after, after 22,000 left, 10,000 remained. And God said there were still too many. And he took them to the rivers and tested them. How many people remained at the end of the test? How many people passed the test? Who can remember? Who can, who can tell me? 300. Is 300 too different from 318? Not really different. Do you understand that? So maybe we are looking for just 300 people in the headquarters that are, or there will be maybe 10,000 are there, but the 300 are the ones that we are really hunting for. Okay? Looking for here and there. That we carry the load and take it further. And amongst your children, you should not be looking at those ones that are going to cause the swing to go upward not to drag it down are you following what i'm saying praise god amen all right let's give them a hand now and go back thank you very much for helping me all right now did you get the picture now so each of you must now take that on a personal level now and go back home and look at your daughter look at the age that your daughter your son is and ask yourself, at that age, what were you like? Were you a serious Christian or is a more serious Christian than you? I hope you have followed what I'm saying. If you look at the swing of the, of the curve, I'm sure Pastor Lajolos got born again now. He was not born again at that age. Huh? So if the boy continues growing like that, the likelihood that the swing will be upward is very strong. Are you following me? I mean, look at Elder Swing now. And um, I'm sure that Elder too was not born again at that time. And then the swing is likely to go up. I hope you are following what I'm saying. Okay? So don't be the kind of Christian that you think you are helping your children by keeping them from spiritual things. I don't want you to... I want to look at now that... Um, um, can you imagine that you labor and labor and labor and labor and everything? You now, you now, you now, you now will your house to your son and then years later you have passed on you have done everything and then you found that your house they have made your house the headquarters of shango worship somewhere where are you, where are you are in heaven you'll be angry so you have to take care of that one now are you following what i'm saying praise god because that's part of the warfare is that clear all right sit down so I want you to take note of that. Devil, God thinks generationally. The devil also thinks generationally. Most successful nations think generationally. It is careless nations that don't think generationally. Careless people don't think generationally. They are not concerned about what is happening with the future. We must be concerned about the future. That's part of the warfare. Now, what brought me to that is to tell you the different levels of victory i'm not talking about that today particularly but ultimate corporate personal and generational remember i told you there is a course that 
people can carry the cost of personal defeat in the midst of corporate victory you must not carry that cost but you can also carry a blessing and the blessing is the blessing of personal victory in the midst of corporate victory personal victory in the midst of corporate defeat you can be in the midst of corporate defeat and you come out victorious you can be working for a, comp a company that goes under and you come out wealthy that's it. that you must understand what your christianity is to give you and to help you to be like i hope you got that wave your hand if you're still here so it is your direct responsibility to make sure that you are not a victim on the winning side if you are born again you are on the winning side already the church will win ultimately because we have won before the battle started the kingdom of god will win ultimately because the kingdom won before the devil started the battle is that okay but not every member of the kingdom of god down through the ages has had personal victory it is your own personal responsibility to make sure that i come out victorious and then your personal victory you must seek that it becomes generational victory down through the line i hope you are following what i'm saying when i started raising my children as a, as a father and as a pastor because i saw all the damages that um, children of church people down when i was coming up as a young christian i saw it and i prayed that god help me i don't want to have this kind of problem how do i deal with it how do i help my children and the first thing that lord made me to understand is i should not pastor them directly in the sense of do private pastoring as a um, as a father private pastoring What do I mean by private, private pastoring? That is, every time they always knew their pastor. I hope you have heard what I'm saying. I was the pastor of the church. They are members of the church that they have their pastor. And then they graduated into becoming what they are today. I hope you are following what I'm saying. I saw the danger of private pastoring. And then I brought it into the pastor's forum because I saw many churches that they have a role, automatic role for a pastor's wife. That when a man becomes a pastor, the wife automatically becomes the woman leader. Now, right from when I didn't have that, I didn't have church work, I knew it was wrong. Because I knew there were many of the women that they were forced into this role, they didn't understand what to do. They are struggling. They just took them from their life and they are posing. They are acting. Now you can't act life. You just have to live life the way you are. So we, we brought into the pastors from uh, our pastor's wives. They have pastors. That is not their husband. If you see a pastor's wife in Dream Center that is not doing well, the husband is doing private pastor. Are you following? I'm just as every member report to their pastor. Even if the pastor, the wife, the pastor, the wife, the pastor's wife is a pastor, she still has a pastor. Are you following what I'm saying? That I want to travel. Your husband is traveling. Your the husband relate to me and say, Daddy, I'll be traveling. All right. The wife relate with her pastor. I'm traveling. And they deal with the structure. So as to have that safety. Are you hearing me? Look at our pastor in um, Houston. He came to church as a primary three student. The parents have, didn't come to church, but he kept coming from primary school, went to secondary school, went to university, and, and he stayed in church until he went overseas. And he's the pastor there. And you can see the fire in his spirit. He has imbibed and grew. He had his pastor. Are you following what I'm saying? It is one of the classic problems that we deal with in church when you have church within a church sometimes you find in some churches you you have um different segments that is breaking the focus of people from the life that god is transmitting are you hearing what i'm saying so i did that for my children so they had their past they have they had the pastors 
If I'm going to church, I say, well, I'm going to church. Okay, and sometimes I have to come late because I've been walking and then I can maybe travel down. And then, and if any one of them say, I want to go with you. Now, Pastor Joshua did not have that problem. When we speak, say, I want to go with you. I said, no, no, you are better run because your pastor is going to worry you. And when they were finding people, they will find you and I'm not going to help you. Because I'm the geo. That you arrive in the geo's car does not mean your pastor will not ask you where you're coming from. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Praise God. So I was, I, I was looking at the future that God helped me. I don't want children that are pretenders. I want my children to be real. I want my wife to be real. I hope you follow what I'm saying. And I don't think any of you in the church here can say that my children are being propped up to do ministry because they are my children. Or my wife is being propped up to do ministry because she's my wife. They pass through their paces. In fact, if I was as tough with church members as I was with them, maybe some church members would be much more giant than they are. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because I didn't take a lax attitude with them at all. But today you find people do private pastoring. And then it creates a system that is different. In the children church, there is a structure that is in place in the church during the intercession on sunday morning at 7 a.m the children church they have their program all the children the parents bring them to church and you see them their classes in place and they are teaching them globally the pastor of the children pastor Kunle, they did a very strong structure globally during covid many churches from different parts of the world they were copying our children church program to download for their children now, while the children's church is going on at 7 to 8, then after 8 o'clock, they, they, they can join the rest of the church. But they have done their training. They have done their teaching. They minister to them and everything. There are some members of the church that their children don't arrive until the parents come. So they didn't do the children's church at 7 to 8. But they will go and join the children's church. So the parents are doing private pastoring. And that is negative pastoring. Because the boy that is coming with his parent at 9 o'clock is being told that children's church is not important. That coming late to church is okay.